Well, um, I've been fortunate as a China specialist to have the opportunity to do uh, research and policy advising and, and private work in a whole variety of areas that are interesting. So, so I haven't found my career to be limited by disciplinary boundaries. I mean, I have my background in law and political science, and I recently completed a divinity degree. So, you know, I have some uh, you know, postgraduate training in a variety of different disciplines, which certainly informs my thinking. Um, but in part of it is I've been just fortunate in, in being a China specialist to be called on to think about a variety of issues, which probably wouldn't have happened if I had been a different kind of academic. So, so I've been fortunate. Um, these are issues that, that generally interest me, but one of the uh, unifying factors is the role of belief systems, uh, normative values, and perspectives in the way that identities are built, the way that communities see themselves and their role, and ultimately in the way that communities interpret and implement rules. So, so legal culture has been a central part of my academic work for my whole career. Uh, the theory of, of selective adaptation, which I've been developing over the past few years, is a, is a way of trying to uh, bring some quantitative uh, perspectives to I, uh, questions about legal culture. Um, the notion that interpretation of rules would depend on local values is sort of intuitively obvious, but it hasn't been demonstrated empirically um, and so until this project got going. So um, I, I think we're making a contribution in that regard. But essentially, in terms of my core interests, it's the way in which our, our beliefs, our values, our view of the world influence the way we uh, interpret and, and act on the material reality that we confront. Can, can you, just sorry, I'm, I'm pushing this, but could you talk a little more about your select, selected adaptation um, idea? I published a book um, on um, globalization and China's legal system uh, some years ago, about eight years ago, I think, I can't remember the date. And, um, and, and that book was really about the way in which China's legal developments needed to be seen as a result of a combined set of influences, local domestic influences, and also the influences of globalization. And as I was pulling the, conf the conclusion of that book together, you know, it, it struck me that what we were really seeing here was a process of what I called at the time selective adaptation. Uh, in that um, the interpretive communities in China, lawyers, government officials, members of the political elite, um, they adapt an international standard, whether it be contracts or environmental law or law and religion or whatever, to local conditions. And they do it in part consciously by saying, well, what are our policy priorities and how are we going to manage and massage these external rules to fit those policy priorities? But another big part of it is the subliminal reaction because when we look at a an international human rights standard or an international trade standard many of those are grounded in the liberal political tradition that w that we in Canada and North America Europe take for granted so when when we are interpreting a rule such as the government must provide information about the regulations that it enacts transparency rule we we sort of accept that as a as a given because it's consistent with our value system but our value system is not universal and so when a Chinese official looks at that rule, they are interpreting it in a completely different way. They have a conscious interpretation in terms of their own policy priorities, but they also have a subconscious, a subliminal interpretation, which is based on their own value system. And it's that latter part that I'm very interested in. And I have encountered that countless times in my practice experience in China, and, uh, and so this project is a, in part a product of that. So, so with selective adaptation, we've identified um, three major factors. Uh, we've identified, first of all, a, a tension between acceptance of rules and assimilation of the normative system that underlies those rules, because okay, so that's the dilemma. And by examining uh, perceptions, perception of the rule and perception of the norms, by examining complementarity, the way that the local and the non-local potentially interact, and by examining legitimacy, the way that the local and the non-local have legitimacy and build legitimacy, that gives us a way of examining this process of selective adaptation.